When working in Intercalc 3D, there's a requirement that the model has to be structurally stable in order for it to analyze properly. And that stability typically comes from points of connection between the model and what we think of as ground, or sometimes it may be a connection to another piece of a, of a structure that just isn't modeled. And what we use to make those connections most commonly is referred to as supports in the program. To apply a support at a place like the bottom of a column, what we'll do is select the column base and then come to the Create tab. And under Boundary Conditions, we'll go to Support. This opens the Support dialog, and it offers us a few commonly used types of supports. So for this first location, I'll choose a pinned support that produces resistance to translation, but no resistance to rotation. And then I'll click Apply to Selected Nodes, and we see a graphic out there that depicts that condition. Now, I'd like to show another type of support, and I'm gonna make a little bit of an intentional mistake here and select both the top and the bottom nodes of this column, just so I can show it another feature. Let's set this uh, or these two uh, nodes to fixed supports and say apply. Now we can see what the fixed support graphic looks like. And if we remember back to the boundary conditions support dialog, notice that there is no option to delete a support. There's no way to free something up or remove a support in that dialog. So I added this one up here at the top of the column to show how you would remove an unintentional support. I've reselected that node that's supported, and then I'll come to Modify, Delete, because what we really want to do is this. We want to delete a support at the selected node, and then say OK, and now we're back to just having the support at the bottom of the column. If we take a look at the other type of supports that are available, we do have a roller that allows translation uh, in the X direction, but resistance in the Y and Z direction, and doesn't resist any rotation at all. Click Apply, and notice that it's similar, but has a little uh, couple rollers underneath it to imply that it's free to translate in the X direction. So that's helpful for visualization, and um, lets us see what we've applied sort of from a distance. The other thing that I'd like to show is the support type that we call Other. And in order to do that, I'll just come back in and delete this support in the right rear. There we go. And then I'll reselect that node and come back to Create Boundary Conditions Support. And we'll look at this Others. So this is sort of the free-for-all type of support where you can choose whichever degrees of freedom you do want to resist uh, or which ones you want to be free. The other thing that you'll notice is that this has the enforced displacement or enforced rotation column activated. So this is where you could model something like say support settlement. What we might do is say that we're going to uh, experience a one inch displacement in a downward direction and then we'll apply that. Now the graphic is as informative, informative as it can be in the sense that it shows us which directions it provides resistance in. Um, what it doesn't show us though is that there's a support settlement and that's a great segue to look at the tables because the tables and then specifically supports, this table is where we'll be able to read that prescribed displacement. So here we've got a list of all the supported nodes in the model. Uh, the syntax is X translation, Y translation, Z translation, and then X, Y, and Z rotation, where a zero indicates that there's no resistance or it's free in that degree of freedom, and the one is fixed. And then the table shows prescribed displacements and rotations. So at a glance, we can look down and see that there at node number 71, we've prescribed a one inch downward displacement. 
Um, these also can be edited. These tables are live, so there's no reason that I can't make a change there or to the degrees of freedom and then say OK, and that will be applied to the model. Now, everything that we've talked about so far has been support on nodes that are at the bases of uh, members. I want to make sure that it's clear that supports apply to nodes, including nodes that are in a mesh. I've just saved this one for the end because we're going to have to make an adjustment to the scale in order to see these clearly. But there's no reason that I can't select all the nodes in that mesh and then say create a boundary condition that is a support that behaves as pinned and then apply that to the selected nodes. And then I just need to make a quick adjustment to the graphic scales to make sure that it's a lot more visible. Let's try that there. Now we can see that we've supported all of those nodes.